I'm an addict, yeah. Ashes on the mattress, yeah. What is up, YouTube? and welcome to another video. Now it seems like there's a lot of new folks coming onto the Kubernetes journey because Kubernetes is like this new shiny way of deploying um, container services. And I feel like the um, barrier to entry when it comes to monitoring is pretty darn high. There are a lot of pitfalls like how do you upgrade your cluster without breaking your monitoring? And how do you um, understand all the different components that make up a good monitoring solution? So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at all the components that make up a good monitoring solution. We're going to take a look at the pitfalls of what to look out for when monitoring a Kubernetes cluster and what are some of the basic strategies for getting started with monitoring Kubernetes. So without further ado, let's go. Now the first component that we need to grasp is Prometheus itself. Now, if you're new to Prometheus, check out the suggestion above and the link down below to the Prometheus architecture overview video that I've done, where I explain how Prometheus um, is designed in terms of its architecture and what the role and purpose is that it serves. Now, the way I see Prometheus is that it's a very simple, basic collector. Um, it goes out and fetches metrics. Now where it comes um, becomes tricky is Prometheus has this configuration file. Now it's very straightforward that it has a config file with a lot of links in of what services and endpoints to go and scrape. The problem is this config file becomes large. It's ever growing. Every time you add a new service, you need to come and update this config file. Now Prometheus is also decentralized, meaning that if you want to deploy and you're thinking I'm going to have one um, global Prometheus instance that's going to be like the ivory tower of monitoring, you're making a big mistake. Prometheus is designed to be decentralized. It's been designed to have multiple instances as a distributed architecture. So if um, Prometheus dies, you don't have this massive blast radius for your monitoring. So I would always recommend deploying a Prometheus instance per component. Maybe have one that scrapes the Kubernetes API server. Maybe have a separate one for node exporter. Um, and have multiple Prometheus instances for custom metrics. So each department or, or team that you have in your organization can have their own instance. Um, and that just means that you also keep uh, memory consumption separate because Prometheus stores its, its metrics in memory. So you don't have this need to have this massive machine um, to hold all the metrics. Now, the other tricky part is if you're deploying Prometheus in a native Kubernetes traditional manner, you're going to need a pod YAML, deployment YAML, service YAML, um, secret YAML and config map YAML. You can see all these YAML files that you're gonna need for a single instance. And as I described earlier, we're gonna to have to have multiple Prometheus instances. So now you can understand my point, it becomes really tricky to manage all these configurations. Now, fortunately, it brings me to my next point. Um, there's a, a way to solve this and a much easier way to manage all of this. So this brings me to my next point, which is the Prometheus operator. Now, instead of having five YAMLs, what the community has done they've defined a Prometheus object. So instead of having five YAMLs, we can now just have one YAML called Kind Prometheus. So that makes it much easier to deploy instances as like infrastructure as code. So we just say kubectl apply, we apply our Prometheus YAML and we get an instance up and running. Very simple. Also to reduce the number of updates in the configuration file of Prometheus, we no longer have to interact with these config files. We have another concept that the Prometheus operator introduces, which is called the service monitor. So a service monitor allows us to find and scrape a service. So if I have a team that built a Hello World API and I want to scrape it, all we need to do is create a Hello World service monitor that points to that API. So then Prometheus will automatically update itself because Prometheus will be looking at specific labels that points to service monitors. kubectl apply a service monitor, Prometheus picks up that service monitor, locates the service and starts to scrape it. Very simple. We can also um, put the source code in the, the repos that we need to be. So for example, if you have a custom API called Hello World, you can have a service monitor in that um, alongside that repo. If you're monitoring like the 
the kubelet, the API server, node exporter, and each one of these Git repositories where you have this infrastructure's code, you can have a service monitor located as well. So people can kind of opt in and out of being scraped without updating the Prometheus config maps and con configuration. If you're new to Kubernetes and you're new to the Prometheus operator, check out um, the suggestion card above, link down below. I have a Prometheus uh, video around the operator and the service monitor as well as example code so you can follow along. So now that we have the Prometheus and the Prometheus operator out the way, we will know how to manage um, the Prometheus onto Kubernetes clusters. So the next point I want to talk about are the monitoring components that you need to be aware of. But we want to break down to three components and then those three components are going to have sub components as well. So the three components that I want to talk about, um, the first one is application monitoring. So application monitoring as in you have a dev team that build APIs, they have maybe they have a hello world application and they want to see custom telemetry so anything they instrument in the code we want to be able to track that so custom metrics under application monitoring and then the second one under application monitoring is process metrics so things that developer is not in control of so like CPU uh, memory usage and network IO stuff that the operating system generates so we want that for application monitoring that's the first one the second one is going to be infrastructure monitoring so we want to know how the machines on the control plane is performing so for that we're going to be taking a look at node exporter that is key to monitoring infrastructure bare metal whether it's bare metal virtual machines whatever it is that's running on the kubernetes cluster that's powering our pods and workloads and the third thing that we're going to want to monitor the third component is the kubernetes monitoring component so um, I don't normally worry too much about like the low level stuff of running on kubernetes like the controller manager the API server and things like that but um, if you're interested like monitoring mostly your workloads and stuff like that you need um, three critical things to monitor one is the cube state metrics so you want to deploy cube state metrics onto your cluster that basically helps us monitor the pods and workloads running on kubernetes so that'll give us cpu uh, memory and uh, network of the pods and then we want to take a look at the api server because that one is going to give us our life cycle of our pods so if we have our hello world app running we want to make sure that every time it restarts if it's in a crash loop um, if there's misconfiguration if it's not running we want to know so the api server is key to track the life cycle of pods and daemon sets and deployments on kubernetes and then lastly um, we also want to track the kubelet because the kubelet has some key container metrics about like memory cpu network and things like that um, that we might want to track as well so the kubelet is important so those are three things um, application monitoring uh, infrastructure monitoring and kubernetes monitoring for application monitoring we have two sections we have custom metrics so for custom metrics i've dropped a couple of links down below um, for that'll give you some example code of how to instrument applications um, using the prometheus library the examples i have i think i have node.js python and c sharp so that that's the first one is custom metrics the second one we spoke about is uh, process metrics now to get process metrics we're going to need to deploy some components out of the kubernetes monitoring area because the process metrics is not something that developer has control of that's like cpu um, usage memory usage and network usage those are things we'll take a look at when we um, talk about the kubernetes monitoring components so the next component that we're going to talk about is the second component which is infrastructure monitoring infrastructure monitoring to me is the most important one as there is rich telemetry that comes out of the infrastructure so what we're going to need in, in this part is node exporter node exporter runs on every compute instance of your kubernetes cluster whether it's on-prem or virtual machines um, and pulls all the linux telemetry of your pods containers and processes out so you can find bottlenecks in different um, areas such as CPU, memory, um, disk, network, uh, very, very rich telemetry that you can get out and find bottlenecks in your system. So if you're interested in um, looking at Node Exporter and you want to deploy it to your Kubernetes cluster, take a look in the suggestion card above, link down below. I have example source code as well, and a walkthrough of how to get it up and running um, with relative ease. Now the 
third component that we're going to talk about is the Kubernetes cluster monitoring. To get that going, you're going to need three components. You're going to need um, the cube state metrics server. So you're going to need to deploy that as well as the service monitor and everything to scrape it. That's going to give you telemetry about your pod and deployment, CPU, memory, and network, and a bunch of other metrics as well of the containers running on your cluster. Then you're going to want to scrape the Kubernetes API server. That's the second one. That one will give you good telemetry about your container statuses. So if you have critical workloads that are running that needs to be in a running state, you want you want to make sure your machines, your nodes are running and in, in always in a running state as well. You want to look out for statuses like pending, crash loop, back off, and other kind of bad statuses. So the Kubernetes API server is great for that. Then we want to monitor the third component, which is the kubelet. The kubelet has some low-level container metrics which are very useful. Also health of your nodes that are joining to the cluster. It gives you certain um, certain metrics like pressure levels and things like that, that which you're going to want to um, scrap as well. Now, if you're interested in Kubernetes cluster monitoring, check out the suggestion card above, link down below. I did a video on how to deploy these three components in terms of the monitoring side and how to wire it up to Prometheus using the Prometheus operator. So you can get that up and running with ease as well as some Grafana dashboards and learn how to put all those metrics together. So I also want to talk a bit about the pitfalls of monitoring since there's a lot of new folks that's coming onto the Kubernetes scene. They're going to look, the first thing they're going to look at is how to, how do I monitor this, this cluster? Really easy to deploy a cluster in the cloud. First thing they do is, okay, how do I monitor? Now I found that, I find that the barrier to entry is on one end of the spectrum very high on the one other end of the spectrum it's very low. So what do I mean by that? So in this video, we break down all the components that you're gonna to need to build a good monitoring solution. Now, the barrier to entry, I feel like, is very high because no one understands all these components. And that's the purpose of this video, is to describe all these components in detail so you have a, an understanding of what are these components that I need to put together to monitor efficiently. So in that end of the spectrum, the barrier to entry is very high. On the other end, um, the barrier to entry is very low because people come on, they deploy their cluster, they come onto Google, they search um, how to monitor, and they, they might go, depending on what their search result is, they might find the Helm repos of the upstream, you know, the community, and they might just go Helm install and it's very simple to get started which i find is quite a massive pitfall because they don't understand all the components have been deployed so it just takes it's literally just a ticking time bomb to the point where they want to upgrade their cluster or they want to move things around or make a small change and their entire monitoring solution just falls flat if you take a look at these helm charts there's also so much yaml there's like 20 to 30 different yaml files new folks have to kind of get an understanding of what's going on inside there and so much abstract in my point of view just creates a massive pitfall and it hides the implementation details from development teams that have to like take this on especially if you're new and you don't understand any of these components you don't know what how do I monitor the kubelet why do I monitor the kubelet um, why do I monitor node exporter what is node exporter why what what happens if I don't monitor the API server what happens if I upgrade my cluster cloud providers make it so easy to upgrade a cluster you press a button and next moment you know your monitoring just falls flat because some of the things are not compatible with that version of Kubernetes. So you have to take these things into consideration. And that, that's kind of the reason why I made this video. So you can understand all these components. And when you want to do upgrades, um, you, you because you understand the components, you can separate their installation and their deployments and their configuration. So you can test them individually on a separate cluster before you do that upgrade and make sure that the compatibility still works. It also helps you to keep up to date with what the community is doing. And then when you go into those Helm chart repos and you go into those community repositories, you can then see what they're doing and you can understand why it's being done that way because you understand the components yourself. So next we're going to talk about my strategy. I, I have like four things that I normally do. The first thing is I like to have a deep level understanding of all the components as I break it down in this video. So hopefully this video helps you understand all those components when it comes to a good monitoring solution. The second um, thing, if you look at this video that I do, um, and all my Kubernetes monitoring videos is I like to break these components out and deploy them separately, have their um, YAML files and their templates and code as infrastructure as code in Git. 
so I'm able to keep my source code separately from the community separately from the upstream so if community makes changes if the upstream rep repositories change I am not impacted and that gives me the ability to upgrade at my own pace so the third thing is make sure you uh, maintain your level of understanding so just because you've broken it down you have everything in Git, like I do in these videos um, make sure you maintain that understanding because just because you understand it today tomorrow and a few months later everything changes so always keep an eye out on the upstream repositories and what the community is doing keep an up-to-date with the documentation make sure you keep your knowledge up to date of what's happening and what's coming so that'll make it easier for you to upgrade your cluster and upgrade your monitoring without impacting your services so that being said it's always good to revalidate your knowledge and make sure what your understanding is today is still valid when moving forward and the fourth and final thing that I like to do and not a lot of people are able to do this in their organization is to um, deploy kubernetes clusters every time you do changes don't do in place cluster upgrades I like to always keep my cluster fixed um, I deploy everything infrastructure as code and then what I like to do is if a new monitoring version comes out like I want to do something new on Prometheus or something new, I will deploy a whole new cluster. Um, I'll apply the changes to that one. I'll migrate all the workloads, put some traffic on it, test it out. And if things go bad, I can just point back to my old Kubernetes environment. The same thing for when minor Kubernetes versions come out, not even ma major. So if there's like a minor update on Kubernetes version, I like to just deploy a whole new cluster. Um, and when you script and automate that up using whatever automation is, is that you use, you're able to find that it's really simple if you have everything in Git, like your manifests for all your monitoring systems, um, everything else you're running on the cluster, it's not just about monitoring, but it's like your ingress controller and things like that, makes it really simple to get your clusters up and running within a few minutes. And you can simply put 5% traffic on it, test it out, because a lot of these problems only surface days later. And if you're doing in-place cluster upgrades, you're going to probably find yourself in a point where you might not have a rollback. So that's one of the other, the final strategies that I do when it comes to monitoring is I will deploy my monitoring on a separate cluster, test it out in isolation before I make the changes. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope I managed to put everything into perspective for you guys. Make sure to check out those links down in the description. Check out the other videos as well. Um, let me know down in the comments what sort of stuff you guys are struggling with when it comes to Kubernetes monitoring. Um, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.